Researchers in the UK, meanwhile, are using artificial intelligence to revolutionise traditional industries such as farming. But even as scientists take big leaps forward, concerns remain that governments are still playing catch-up when it comes to regulation. Stuart Smith has more in the first of a three-part series on AI in Europe and in Africa. At England's Harper Adams University, they're trying to make farming more sustainable, more productive and safer. And they've found technology which uses artificial intelligence can help with that. You can see as I move my arm that the uh, point on the elbow, the point on uh, the, the wrist and the connections between those body parts are being tracked. We use them to detect pedestrians as they're walking for autonomous vehicles. Here on the farm, we might use it uh, in the dairy to track out the movement of dairy cows and to identify health issues. But believe it or not, farms generate a lot of data. They generate data in terms of the yield of the products that they make, in terms of the expenses that they accrue. Traditionally, I think there has been a, a local ad hoc way of managing this data, but we want to we leverage AI to do things these days. Yield forecasts, mini robot tractors and pesticide spraying by drone are all technologies which use AI that could become standard. I have been surprised at how receptive farmers are. They're really excited. There is a challenge that I've perceived too, though, that uh, some farmers are a little concerned about giving up their data immediately to, to companies. My close colleagues and farmers as well would probably almost all agree that we need more regulation. Researchers here have made their own suggestions to the British government about what that could look like for autonomous farm vehicles, but there's a perception among those in the industry that governments are behind when it comes to regulation. The UK brought together geopolitical heavyweights at its AI safety summit last year, convincing China, the US, India and Indonesia to commit to independent testing of AI before it's deployed. But the specifics are yet to be outlined. In the meantime, many of those that work with AI say they are aware of the risks and taking steps to minimise its danger. The University of Bristol's robotics lab in southwest England is developing swarm robots, simple robots following simple rules to achieve complex tasks such as impressive light shows, detecting forest fires or moving items around a warehouse. We use two different ways to design swarms. One is bio-inspiration, so we've copied flocking rules to make flying robots that flock. We've copied decision-making rules from bees as they decide on their next nest site to make robot swarms that can make decisions. Sometimes, however, we don't have rules from the biological world, especially in some of these real-world applications. And there what we tend to do is, is do machine learning. We use machine learning to automatically discover the rules, but the rules that we discover, they're human-readable. They're not these black boxes, and so we can look at the rules, understand how the systems form, and then we can also implement them on our robots. By understanding the decision-making logic of what the AI is doing and converting it to human-readable code, researchers can be more confident their creations will stick to the job they're meant to be doing. It's all part of building trust in what looks set to be a revolutionary technology. Stuart Smith, CNA, London.